And Miller has been on death row for quite some time, so the memory of this horrific crime may have faded for a lot of people. But 10 News reporter Jim Matheny has given us some context, going back in time to show us exactly why the state plans on killing this man tonight. A warning, this report includes some graphic details of a very violent crime. When David Miller dies in the electric chair in Nashville, the family of his victim, 23-year-old Lee Standifer, will not be there. Hello. But Lee's mother, Helen Standifer, did agree to talk to us on the phone from her home in Arizona and sent these pictures of Lee. Well, she was a very positive person. She was a very happy person. And she got a Special Olympics gold medal. She got a lot of joy out of life. Doctors diagnosed Lee Standifer with diffuse brain damage when she was just a child. With special education, she graduated from Farragut High School. She was quite capable in many ways. She rode the bus to work, and she wanted to be on her own. She wanted her own place. We did end up letting her move into the YWCA. She was in a very good place at that point. She could read, and she enjoyed reading. She read a lot. She went to the library a lot. In May 1981, that's where she met 22-year-old David Miller. Evidently, he asked her for a date. She loved people and just obviously not a good judge of character. Miller was a drifter from Ohio who landed in Knoxville hitchhiking a couple of years earlier. That's when a longtime Baptist preacher and school principal, Calvin Thomas, picked Miller up and started a sexual relationship. Miller eventually moved into Thomas's home in South Knoxville. That house is where Miller took Lee Standifer. The nude, beaten, and bludgeoned body of Lee Standifer, who was said to have had the mentality of a 12-year-old, was found May 21st in this wooded area near the home of Benjamin Calvin Thomas. It was Thomas who found Lee Standifer's brutally stabbed body. It was Thomas who called police. We've put out a, a pickup nationwide for Mr. Miller. A week later, Miller was arrested at a bar in Columbus, Ohio, and confessed on tape. The state's case is a bizarre tale of sex, drugs, and murder. Prosecutors said the motive for the murder was Miller's psychopathic desire for sexual gratification combined with violence. The jury deliberated for little more than an hour with an announcement. Miller would die by the electric chair. If the jurors could hear him put it in his own words how he did it, that played a major factor in the electrocution sentence. But just a couple of years later, his sentence was overturned. So in 1987, a new jury heard Miller's case and once again decided he should die in the electric chair. That one thing that we felt very strongly about was that he should not be, ever be out there on the street for anybody else to go through this. Since then, his case has gone through every appeal, and his execution, along with many others in Tennessee, have been perpetually delayed by broader arguments against capital punishment. Oh, of course, I had no idea what, how long it would take. It's just un unreal, frankly. Now more than 37 years after he killed her daughter, Miller is set to die in the electric chair. And Standifer says she wants the world to remember the victim, her death, and especially her life. She was a very vibrant person and just didn't get a chance to see what her life would hold, what she could be and do. In Knoxville, Jim... And now here are some facts about this execution taking place tonight from the Tennessee Department of Correction. If he is executed as planned, Miller would be the 13th man executed from Knox County dating back to 1916. In those 100 years, many counties have never had a man from their county put to death. That includes Blunt, Sevier, and Cock counties. Miller is the longest serving man on death row right now, but not the oldest. Miller is 60. The oldest is 72. Miller chose to die by electrocution, and there have been two others in the last decade. Edmund Zagorski last month and Daryl Holton in 2007. And there are vigils being held all the way from Memphis to Knoxville tonight, protesting the execution tonight. Again, that is set for 8 o'clock. We do have a media witness inside that will bring the details as soon as it's over with. We'll send it back to you.
All right, and of course, we will continue to bring people up to date online and tonight on the night. B. Brandon, thank you very much. We do have more background at WBIR.com. There you can also watch the witness statements live following the execution, and we will bring you live coverage from Nashville tonight on the night beat.